In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to define and fit a linear mixed model in ASRAML R4. The data set we'll analyze is from a repeated measures multi-center clinical trial comparing three drugs for controlling hypertension. The data are stored in a file called hypertension.txt. You can find copies of each file used in this tutorial in the video description. Patients from 29 medical centers participated in the trial, and their diastolic blood pressure was recorded at six visits, two pre-treatment and four post-treatment. The post-treatment diastolic blood pressure measurements are in column DBP, with the visit column indicating which post-treatment visit, number three, four, five, or six, the measurement was taken at. Column DBP1 contains the average diastolic blood pressure from the two pretreatment visits. Patient, visit, center, and treat are factors, and DBP and DBP1 are variates. You can learn more about this data set and its analysis in Brown and Prescott's book, Applied Mixed Models in Medicine. Now, let's define a linear mixed model for this data set. There are four important components of the linear mixed model we need to define. The response variable, the fixed model, the random model, and the residual structure. We'll look at each of these in turn. The aim of the clinical trial was to assess the effect of the three drug treatments on post-treatment diastolic blood pressure, variate DBP. Therefore, DBP is the response. As the patient's post-treatment blood pressure measurements are likely to be affected by their initial conditions, we'll include the pre-treatment blood pressure measurement DBP1 as a covariate in the fixed model to control for pre-treatment differences between patients. In addition, the fixed model must include TREAT, the drug treatment factor which we're interested in making inferences about. The PLUS operator is used to add a main effect for TREAT. We'll allow for an underlying change in blood pressure over the four post-treatment visits by including the visit factor in the fixed model. Finally, as the drug treatment effects may differ between visits, we'll also include the treatment by visit interaction. The colon operator is used to specify an interaction. Recall that the patients were recruited from a sample of 29 different medical centers. It's important that we account for this structure in our model. We can do this by including the center factor as a random term. By including center as a random rather than a fixed term, this enables us to make inferences about the wider population of medical centers, not just the 29 we observed. As patient diastolic blood pressure was recorded at four visits post-treatment, this is an example of a repeated measures data set. Therefore, we need to take into account the correlated nature of measurements taken on the same patient over time. In this study, post-treatment blood pressure measurements taken on the same patient at consecutive visits should be correlated, but measurements on different patients are assumed to be independent. That is, for our model, residuals between different patients are assumed to be independent, but residuals originating from measurements on the same patient at different time points, visits, should be correlated. A plausible model for many repeated measures data sets with equally spaced time points such as ours is the first order autoregressive model, AR1. So, we'll assume that residuals from the same patient over the visits will be correlated based on the AR1 variance model. You can learn more about modeling the correlation structure of repeated measures data by watching our repeated measures video on the ASRAML knowledge base. Now that our model is completely defined in terms of the fixed and random models and the residual structure, we are ready to fit our model in ASRAML R4. Let's begin by loading the ASRAML package and the data into R. First, we'll load the ASRAML library. I've put the hypertension.txt data file into a folder on my desktop called Hypertension Trial, so I'll set my working directory to this and then read in the data. The read.table command creates a data frame called data1 containing the hypertension data. 
After we've loaded the data, the next step is to declare the factors. The hypertension data contains six variables. Patient, visit, center, and treat are factors, and DBP and DBP1 are variates. We'll declare the factors using the as.factor function. When we view the structure of our data frame, data1, we can see that the variables have the correct type. Patient, visit, center, and treat are factors, and the variates dbp and dbp1 are integers. The ASREML function is used to fit the linear mixed model. We specify our model using the fixed, random, residual, and data arguments. The fixed terms are supplied as a formula with the response variate dbp on the left of the tilde operator and the fixed terms on the right. The random terms and residual structure are also supplied as formulae. However, unlike the fixed formula, the response variant isn't specified. The data argument is used to specify the data frame to use. We can store our model in an object called AR1Model using the assign operator. Before running this code, we may need to perform some additional actions. For example, set options to deal with missing values or sort our data into the order specified by the residual term. If we run the model code as is, we will get an error. Errors occur whenever we have missing values in any of the explanatory variables. That is, missing values in any of the terms in the fixed random or residual models. Our data set has missing dbp1 values. Missing data due to patient dropout is a common feature in many medical trials. However, we don't want to remove patients with incomplete records from our data set as we'd lose valuable information. One of the benefits of modeling repeated measures data using a mixed effects model is that we can use the information from patients with incomplete records. We'll look at the ASREML function help and find out what option we need to set to deal with the missing dbp1 values. By default, ASREML is estimating missing values for the response, but reporting an error if there are missing values in the explanatory variables. As our model includes an explanatory variable with missing values, dbp1, we must instruct ASREML to fill in the missing dbp1 values with its average by setting na.action. This is equivalent to filling in the missing dbp1 values by hand with the average dbp1. Our model will now fit correctly. Before we move on to extracting useful output from our model, let's touch upon another very important action you may need to perform, sorting your data into the order specified by the residual term. The order of the data must match the residual term. As our model specifies this order, the data needs to be ordered by patient and visit within patient. Had we written it this way, the data would need to be ordered by visit and then patient. It is very important to check that the order of your data matches the residual term. If the order doesn't match, an error will result in most cases. However, sometimes the model will run, resulting in an incorrect estimation. If the order of the data doesn't match the residual term, don't worry. R's order function enables us to sort the data. This command sorts the data frame, data1, by patient and then visit. Now, let's extract some useful output from our model, which we've saved in an object called AR1Model. We can use the plot function to produce residual diagnostic plots. We should inspect this plot for evidence of departures from the residual assumptions of normality and constant variance. Our residuals look okay. There are potentially a couple of outliers, but as we have no reason to believe they are due to erroneous data, we'll retain them in the analysis. The following commands display the variance components, the fixed and random effects, and wall tests for the fixed effects. 
Here, we have the variance components, standard errors, component divided by standard error, boundary constraints, and the percentage change at final iteration. Scrolling further, we have the fixed effects estimates, standard errors, and estimate divided by standard error. Further down, we have the random effects. Here are the estimates, standard errors, and the estimate divided by the standard error. Lastly, we have the output from the wall tests. Here are the numerator degrees of freedoms, denominator degrees of freedoms, incremental F statistics, and P values. The default wall tests are incremental, meaning they are conditional on the order the terms appear in the table. For example, the test of the treatment by visit interaction represents the effect of adding this term to a fixed model already containing the intercept, the covariate DBP1, and the main effects for treat and visit. The wool test provides some statistical evidence of an interaction between the drug treatment and visit. That is, there is some evidence to suggest that the drugs have different effects over time. AS Remel also offers conditional wool tests, which are produced by setting the SS type option to conditional. Let's output the predicted drug treatment by visit means and the standard errors of the differences. We can do this using the predict function. Under the notes section are the columns of predicted means and standard errors. The standard errors of the differences are printed in a matrix. At the end of the output, we have the minimum, mean, and maximum standard error of the difference. The means are associated with the rows and columns of the matrix according to their order in the table of means. That is, the standard errors of the differences associated with drug treatment A at visit 3 are found in row 1, or, as the matrix is symmetric, column 1. The standard error of the difference for comparing the means of drug treatment A and B at visit 3 is found in row 1, column 5 of the matrix, or, alternatively, row 5, column 1, as the matrix is symmetric. You can learn more about performing mixed effects analysis using ASRML R in the reference manual, which you can access from the ASRML knowledge base.